in this clip I'm going to talk about composite variables. Why do we want composite variables? Well, we often want to use composite variables because we want to measure some concept that cannot be captured with one variable only. So that concept may be very complex. And therefore what we want to do is we want to combine certain variables into a single measure for such a concept. So as an example, let's use poverty. So if you look at the basic definitions for poverty, you'll mainly find that this relates to income. Okay, to a monetary measure, either relative or absolute, how much money does, say, a family uh, have available to them. And there are different sort of measures for that. But then, this is possibly a, a, a quite, if not too narrow, definition. For instance, um, I looked up, this is aside from the Joseph Roundtree Foundation, and they have a little bit of information on what, what is poverty, and they I say exactly what I just said. There's mainly definition of relative poverty, and that refers to uh, to income. Okay, relative income poverty. There's also a measure to of absolute poverty. But what they point out is that the issue of poverty is much wider. So they say that, uh, for instance, access to decent housing. Uh, to community amenities, uh, maybe also libraries or childcare access. Uh, these are important concepts that play into poverty as well. So we should possibly include here other things like access to education, access to other social amenities social amenities amenities okay think libraries swimming pools perhaps so if you think about this this how we would measure this this one would certainly be measured in pounds okay access to education Ooh, there could be several measures that measure this okay because that may be sort of quantity how many schools it may also be what is the uh, quality of schools in your area so we could have quite a lot of different sort of units of measurements okay so I just call them a B and C just to indicate there may be different ones and um, access to other social amenities again that may be measured in you know perhaps some the same measures as the access to education but there may also be some totally different measure that doesn't apply to education. So this ABC indeed just refer to some sort of units, but certainly may be different to to pounds. But we all want to combine we want to combine all these all these measures here into one. Okay, into one index for poverty. So somehow we need to be able to combine random variables with different scales uh, to one variable. Let's illustrate this on the next slide with a numerical example. So in this example, it's actually a little bit more straightforward than the more complex one. What we want to know is what is sort of the overall achievement of a child in school, um, but we're going to restrict ourselves to measures of maths and reading. Okay, but We don't want to know how good is the child in maths or how good is it in reading. We want to know how good is it combined. Now our our measures, we now have certain information. We have a random variable, let's call it x maths, and we have another random variable, let's call that x reading. And we know different things about this. So for reading, the average score is 23. Let's say that may be across Manchester or across the country. That's not quite specified here. And the standard deviation is 10. Whereas for 
maths, the average score is 15 and the standard deviation is 16. Okay, so these are the two pieces of information. Now we were interested in a specific pupil and that particular student has a math score of 35 and has a reading score of 22. So we want to know how does that place that child overall. So in order to combine these, now these may both be measured in sort of the same units or grades in school, but you can see they they are on quite different scales. So reading scores tend to be much higher and perhaps it's actually not the same scale. Okay, we don't know. So the point is we can create composite variables if even if you have different scales. So let's look at the maths skills of that of that child. Now its math score is 35. What we shall calculate is the standardized value of its math score. So we'll take the 35, we subtract the maths mean and we divide by the maths standard deviation. Okay, so this is our our usual set score set is x minus x bar divided by s. Okay, and that's our standardized formula, standardization formula, that's what we apply here. What we get is 1.25. And we know that means that the the pupil's maths achievement is more than one standard deviation better than the mean. So what about the the reading scores? The reading score is 22. So we calculate another standardized score for reading, 22. We subtract the average 23 and we divide by the standard deviation 10, we get negative 0.1. So that particular student is just slightly uh, worse than the average, but only a tenth of a standard deviation. So if we now want to combine this measure, we can do that with a composite variable, let's call it ability, we should call it ability in maths and reading, it's still quite specific, and what we can do is we can just add the two standardized scores, okay, and what we get is 1.15, so that will tell us that overall, overall the pupil is a bit more than one standard deviation, a bit more than one standard deviation better than the mean in maths and reading. So to summarize what we have what we have done in this example and more and more generically. Okay, we have we take a range of variables and we combine them combine these into one measure measure so the example we used here was to add the standardized variable. So that's one very simple way. Add the standardized variables. Now examples, there were two variables, the math score and the reading score. Now this is not the only way how several variables can be combined, but it's the only one we talk about in this course. Let me briefly show you two other examples. Um, one so two here. Another example is, so that's an example, that was a general measure, another example, measures of deprivation. Deprivation. So that is when countries or organizations want to measure 
what sort of percentage of their population lives in what's called social deprivation. That has been introduced because the sort of above poverty measure which we talked about, which mainly relates to income, was perceived as too narrow as discussed before. So people have thought about what, what can we do more globally, and more wider measures. So let me show you the following uh, website. So you, you could look for uh, a website just adjust this to, to fit in more or less into the window. You could search for a uh, social situation observatory and you will find that. And there's indicators of material deprivation. There's something called material deprivation. Okay? And there are indicators of material deprivation. And this organization that uh, in the Western world sort of quite quite good indicators increase that just a little bit is for instance have you got a telephone have you got a TV a washing machine a car can you have a week's holiday um, um, a meal with some sort of meat or vegetarian equivalent at least every other day uh, is your household warm and two financial measures with, are you in areas with your bills or um, what you know, how much money of your income do you need for your regular expenses. Now, deprivation, we are, we are saying of a family being in material deprivation, if a family is in, in trouble or doesn't have at least three of these nine items. So, this is a different, here we have nine variables, but the way how this is combined into one variable is to check whether a family is missing at least three of these. And then there's a measure of severe material deprivation and uh, the definition here is that in uh, at least four of these nine items the family doesn't have. Okay, So it's a different way of combining these variables. We're just checking whether three or four are not available to a household. And the last example, I want to say that was measure of severe deprivation. Another example, a quite interesting one, is what is called cloud. Oh, that's a company, so I would like to call it cloud. Um, it's a company that tries to measure what your social influence is. Okay? Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, let that be... Uh, we don't want to discuss here, but basically you, you can see here what it is. It's a number which measures your overall social, here's the definition, your overall social media influence. Now what they say is that they combine more than 400 variables into that one measure. Now this is a private company, they are not going to tell us how they combine the 400 variables into this one measure, but in essence this cloud score is a composite variable. Okay? It's a, possibly a quite complicated one uh, but it's a composite variable of more than 400 variables. It is unlikely that it is either defined as just the addition of standardized values for these 400 variables. It's most likely not defined like the measure of deprivation either. So here we had something like minimum of three out of nine items and then you were considered uh, deprived. Cloud, how we do this, okay, so this is out of 400 variables, but how we don't know. Okay, so that's the secret. It's like the recipe for Coca-Cola, possibly. Okay, that's all I wanted to say on composite variables.